The war has dragged on for nine months now, and Hornet's squadron are still billeted at Chateau Saint-Pierre. Despite sporadic action, this has become known as the phony war. Two of our pilots, Fitzgerald and Gordon, were married, but the celebrations were interrupted by a surprise visit from the Luftwaffe. Suddenly, the battle for France has begun. Our losses have been crippling. There has even been open hostility to squadron leader Rex, who was regretfully lost in action. The other pilots blame themselves, but there will be no inquiry, and the Australian, Barton, has taken over. The Germans are advancing, and refugees have taken to the roads. Fitzgerald and Gordon's young brides have been packed off to England, but I fear nowhere is safe in this country now. With our lack of spitfires and spares, it must only be a matter of time until the enemy realises how weak we really are. Quick as you can, flight. Refuel and rearm them. You blokes ready? Jerry's streaming through the Ardennes. You're gonna get a lot of trade. What did you get? A couple of Junkers and a 109. It's the big push, all right. So get in close, hammer the buggers, and get out quick. But please, don't take chances. Lose these four and we're out of business. <sighs> Any questions? I'd be too embarrassed to ask. Pip, you all right? Never been better. Not 100 percent yet, but you know. But the doc says you're fit for duty. Yeah, doc says don't do anything stupid. I think he means squash, not flying. Good luck. Thanks. Don't do anything rash, Haggis. Right it's all right for you, Pip. CEO's never asked me if I'm okay. What's your problem? Toothpaste. I haven't cleaned my teeth for ages. That's because I'm broke. I haven't been paid for three weeks. Ah. Oh. How come you've got money? Because I'm rich. Well, well, that explains it. I've got masses of toothpaste. I'm renting it out. Toppings a squeeze. No money. He lend you some. 50 francs, 33% interest. Was that good? Good, it's phenomenal. I mean, I usually charge my friends 10%. Very high. But you're a lousy risk, that's why. You're an incompetent fighter pilot with an airplane put together with string and glue. Make it 50%. I'll tell you what, Sticky, it's a snip. Don't chuck around too much, sir. The other cable's a bit frayed. Thanks a lot. OK, I'll take it. 33%. 50! Social facilities. Well, what do you suggest? Salvation Army mobile canteen. More a French Army mobile brothel. You were talking to a happily married man. I thought they were the best customers. Oh, what a war. Can't even get the pox. Wake me up when the war's over, will you?
Find us below at two o'clock. Heinkels, let's get into them. Bandits behind! Bandits behind! On your tail, Pip! Christ! Sorry, I can't hear you, Mary. Where are you? Oh, God, it's a terrible line. But what happened? What? Well, of course you couldn't do anything about it. Yes. Hello. Hello. <sighs> now, who's going to tell him? Young Gordon's wife. Oh, no. Where exactly? Mary's in Calais. They were starved. Poor girl. Well, you were right. Sticky was a lousy risk. Yeah. Nearly lost the money. What a way to die. With dirty teeth. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I used to be a pessimist, but it's too depressing. Give me good news. 1109, definite and probable. Sticky? I was a prang or something like that. The kite blew up and. Well, and Pip? He jumped out. He bailed out? He sort of flopped out. Last seen his boot was flying towards Germany. I don't know what happened. His plane didn't seem damaged. It should seem okay. It was about 20 miles from here. What's up with Flash? I, uh, saw your bike. I'm really sorry. Rotten luck. Mm -hmm. Mary's okay? 
Mm, apparently. A bit shaken. Uh, supposedly, it was an ME 109. Ordinary people. Children. Just bloody strafed them. I was after a 109. No, this was near Calais. Funny. You don't think about the people on the ground. We were nowhere near Calais. You see the map? France isn't big. We flew hundreds of miles that day. But nowhere near Calais. We were miles away. Honestly. She didn't want to go, that's a funny thing. She did it for me. We're the ones who should be killed. That's our job. Yes. Say a word, chaps, but look what the cat's brought in. Good God. Been on the tiles, Haggis? I think you need a doctor. Where's Sticky? You saw what happened, didn't you? Where have you been? Hanging around. I've been hanging around, get it? What do you mean? I was in a tree, talking to the birds. Did they say anything to you? You do talk an awful lot of drivel, Moggy. Yes, but I haven't jumped out of an aeroplane for a long time. What do you mean? Oh, come on, you two. No. What are you trying to say, Moggy? I don't trust our parachutes. The air and the wind buggers up your hair. I'd rather fight a Messerschmitt. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! He's a bloody maniac! You're gonna destroy Moggy, but you can't bloody take it, can ya? I'll kill the bastard! Kill! 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 kill. That's all he wants to do! He killed Dickie Star! He killed Rex! He probably killed Riley, Trevally, and Lloyd! All right, all right, all right, funny with me. He's gonna kill everybody! Oh, Until there's no one left but himself! We're going now. Well, he's not gonna kill me! No, he's not! Come on, old chap. You okay, Mog? Oh, terrific. Bugging up my makeup. And a strange sensation around the eyelashes. Fine, fine. A funny chap. Was it something I said? Thank you. This is the end of the framboise, sir. Rex's favorite tipple. Well, this could be the end of Hornet Squadron as well. So we're not going to get any more Spitfires. The Air Ministry says no fighters for France. Hitler changed the rules. Nobody really wanted this war, you know. Do you remember when you came to France? Quiet little war, almost gentlemanly. As I recall it, wasn't it something to do with Poland and decency? Who the hell said that? I think it was you, sir. Did I? Well, there's Poland and decency for you. You chaps are now technically classified as useless mouths. So we're going to send you home. What's going to happen then, sir? Spot of leave, I suppose. Going to miss this, though. 
I don't care what anyone says, I'm proud of the squadron. Well, I'll drink to that. They all did their best. Here, here, sir. Don't feel downhearted. Think of it in this way. Poland, Denmark, Holland and Belgium are out of the preliminaries. France is losing hands down. So it's England and Germany for the final. Well, that can't be bad. Particularly as we've got the home ground advantage. With your usual insight, sir, we can hardly lose. Good morning, sir. Pilot Officer Steele Stebbing, sir. What'd you say? Steele Stebbing. Are you Swedish? Certainly not, sir. Do you know where I can find the CO? I'm the CO. And don't you ever forget that. You'll never shoot a bird with that, sir. Who says? See? The flare's just a decoy. They think they know everything, these seagulls. From my long experience, I would think that that's a Swedish seagull, Mark III. What do you think? Are the Swedes on our side? I really am English, sir. Yeah, so you say. Do you know where I can find the other pilots? No idea. And the aeroplanes? Aeroplanes? You Swedish prick! We don't need aeroplanes. I mean, you're a highly trained pilot, aren't you? Well, are you? You know how to fly. We don't need aeroplanes. Here, have you got one of these? Service issue. If there's any enemy aircraft in the area, you just stick this up your ass. And if it's an ME 109, you turn round quickly and give them a volley. Yeah! You'll get the hang of it in a couple of days. Varad it somehow, hand, eh? Sorry, sir. Don't you know your own language? I studied Swedish for three hours. Don't come the old soldier with me. Bodkin Hazel Airfield, please. Annie? Hello, Chris. Good to see you, your reprobate. You too. Did you have a good leave? Yeah, it's OK. Run out of cash. Incidentally, you got enough to pay for this? Don't believe it. Whatever happened to the family millions? Well, I made a decision. I mean, why should I subsidize their bloody war? If the government hired me, they can damn well pay the rate for the job. They lost the squadron's documents, you know? Yeah. Lost an army as well. <laughs> I talked to my father the other day. He told me I'd join the wrong side. Is he pro-Nazi? <laughs> Are you kidding? Thinks they're soft on communism. <laughs> Mind you, we don't exactly see eye to eye. When I went to Spain, he was delighted because I joined the Republicans. It was a while before he realized that Spanish Republicans weren't his type of Republican. <laughs> Next, the British Empire is run by Jewish trade union leaders controlled by Moscow. Gotta win this war, Fanny, just to show my father he was wrong. Hey, congratulations on the stripe. Thanks. Are you interested in promotion? Why, what do you offer? You want to command a flight? Twist my arm. Acting flight lieutenant. And the money's incredible. <laughs> Is that all? You can shout at people. And? And well, if you live long enough, 
Gone. Guaranteed. Even your father would be impressed. Driver, stop here. I assume it was from her. Or maybe it was from her mother. You really are disgusting. Yes, that's what my sister-in-law said. She'll never forgive me. So come on, Moggy. How'd you get the car back? Well, some chap from the Royal Armoured Corps helped me. And I did the decent thing when I got back to London. I phoned Rex's father. And you know what he said? He said, why don't you keep it, Wing Commander Catabol? <laughs> <laughs> now, that was a decent thing to do, don't you think? Am I supposed to believe that, Moggy? On my honour. He even sent me the logbook. <laughs> Good <laughs> God almighty. Hello, chaps. Where have you been? More to the point, where have you been? Waiting for the war. What's that? You'll like it. Get it off. We're not in the Navy. It'll be good. I don't give a damn. Shave it off. And if you're going to the local pub, wear uniform. That's an order, Flash. I remember when he was one of the chaps. I remember when you were a human being. You looked like a rat pushed through a hedge. What'd your parents say, Flash? Haven't seen them. Where'd you spend your leave? Well, I just stayed here. I had a good time. Drank 200 bottles of Guinness and shot plenty of seagulls. He's bloody mad. What did you say, Flip? I said you're bloody mad. I wonder about that. Mind you, it takes all kinds, doesn't it? What would we do without you? Even Moggy's going to buy you a drink. Well, I'm sure you blokes would be very happy, Rose. I'm happy killing Germans. Very good. We'll get our new Spitfires tomorrow. Did you lose all your aircraft in France? Very nearly, I'm afraid. Must have been pretty hairy, sir. I was there. It was cock up. one of our foreign contingent, but he'll want to see you. Anyway, you'll want to settle in first. I don't mind about that, sir. I just want to get into the air. Yes. Me too, sir. That's the stuff. Corporal Beale will show you to your hut. Afterwards, we'll have a bit of a wander. Any problems? You know where I am. Have you seen our new intake? Hopeless, both of them. Really? Absolutely. I'm astonished by your capacity for instant judgment. You met them for what? 14 seconds? That's enough. I know, Skull. And what about the others? Well, the squadron's changed. Yes, indeed. When Rex was CO, the relationship was almost feudal. It didn't work terribly well, which is no great surprise. As you probably know, the feudal system itself was less than totally satisfactory. With Fernie Barton, you have a more popular leader. Almost democratic. But what about the blokes? Oh, they're behaving exactly as one would expect. The old sweats have ganged up on the new faces. Of course, they're all deeply suspicious of the foreigners. I mean, we're supposed to fight against foreigners. Very confusing. They're bloody keen, aren't they? I'd say obsessional. They're real killers. Like Moggy. They want to kill Germans, but Moggy, quite happy to kill anybody. Well, I'm all for the Moggies of this world, as long as they're on our side. Not like Steel Stebbing. He got very good marks in his training, so they say. I knew his father at college. An insufferable man. I rather think the son is trying to escape from him. What about his mother? Do you know, there was something about the mother. She ran off with an Albanian yachtsman. Fascinating, isn't it? Yes, that's why Steel Stebbing joined the RAF. He was trying to escape from his father, the mother, and the Albanian. Mm. Perhaps he just liked aeroplanes. 
You always make life so boring, old man. Aeroplanes, indeed. Yes, well, you're not a pilot, are you, Scar? Thank God. Any minute you're going to say young Flash Gordon is normal. We're all bloody mad. Touched by something or other. You? I flew through a railway station once. Really? We didn't have much of a roof left, of course. <laughs> I always think of you as a very sober, reliable chap. Well, obviously I've settled down a bit now. Anyway, what I'm saying is, young Flash isn't a lunatic. Have you seen his eyes? What's wrong with his eyes? He should be in a hospital. Nonsense. He's always been odd. I'd rather have him on my side than steel stebbing. Steel stebbing. I knew a steel stebbing. Where was it? Oxford, that's right. He used to wear ladies' clothes. Well, there's not too many of us. I had a cousin at Oxford, Amanda Steel Stebbing. Amanda! Funny name for a boxing blue. He didn't have the figure for summer frocks. But then neither do you. You see, the chap I met, your relative, what, he was a bit flat-chested. But he had the most exciting hips. Mind you, he had quite a good left hook. Does this run in your family? Well, I boxed at school. Well, that's quite remarkable. I did a bit of that. Shall we spar or dance, Amanda? Christ's sake, Morgie, leave him alone. Ah, the tea boy speaks. You have to be very careful about McSporran. When he's upset, he throws cups of tea at you. Why don't you shut your dirty, filthy mouth? Don't worry about him, Amanda. He read English, Latin and rhetoric at Ockenshuggle University. Next time it'll be battery acid. Oh, did you hear what the nasty man said, Amanda? Don't push your luck, Pip. Leave it out, Moggy. Just settle down. Honest to God, Moggy, I don't know where you get the energy from. Oh, Norman Blood, old boy. Scramble one section, sir. Patrol Hastings, Angels 10. That's you, Moggy, and your new friend. Come on, Amanda. We can't go on meeting like this, you know. See, it is the most incredible bargain, Flash. How much I pay for it? I don't know. Five hundred thousand pounds in tuppence. Oh, don't be stupid. It was ten pounds. You could show it. You know, Mary will be very pleased to see you. At least you get some decent home cooking. Hello, Mango Leader. This is Snowball. We have one bandit reported fifteen. That is one five miles northwest of Hastings. Angels eight to ten and is heading east. Got your snowball. Correction, make it west. Correction, Mango Yellow Leader. It's definitely heading south. What are your angels? Angels eight. Mango Yellow, make angels six. Your bandit seems to be losing height. Yellow Leader to Yellow Two. We're getting no joy. Let's have a look at the sea. We'll level out at 100 feet. Don't go in the drink. Snowball. The bandit's down in the drink. We'll have another go. Right, you got him now, Yellow Two. Well, no. Keep right behind my arse. Now, it's far to the left. Do you see him? Oh, yes, I think so. Don't you bloody know? Did you see him, Yellow Two? Yes, Yellow Leader. We've got the bastard! Get the Yonkers. But it's a rescue play. Get the bastard. A quick squirt. Very good, Yellow Two. Did you hear what I said? Yes. 
that Jerry's in the dinghy, did you, Yellow 2? No, I didn't. Oh, dear. You pathetic fart. Rex must be turning in his grave. I'm not complaining. The last time I broke bread with you chaps, it was chilled vichyssoise and roast venison, as I remember it. We still haven't organized the kitchen, sir. It's almost like a real war. We lost Birdsall in France. He was the chef. Probably cooking for the Luftwaffe by now. Well, we've got to rough it a bit now. Rex got his gong. The family were very pleased. And I believe they've commissioned a stained glass window for the village church. It seems years ago now, sir. Well, it was. There's going to be a colossal scrap. Much bigger than France. By the way, I'm delighted you got one of their Red Cross plates today. One of the new boys got it. Well, jolly good. But keep it under your hat. The public doesn't understand. You're confusing me, sir. I mean, they're an absolute menace. They monitor our radio transmissions, sneak in and snaffle their own pilots when they have to ditch. Hit the buggers as hard as you can. But don't come back and tell everybody. Red Cross is an emotional expression. Can you imagine the clergy and the do-gooders? They'd have a field day. They really wouldn't understand. Of course not. Far be it from me to question Fighter Command's orders. But I'm sure you will. Not at all, sir. But if the Luftwaffe has planes that can pinpoint pilots in the channel, why not us? We're not supposed to think of everything, you know. Ah, sir. Does that answer your question? Absolutely, sir.
wait for me here. I want to talk to you. What's the problem? Flash. Well? I want him out of my flight. This new thing is flying inverted. How come I get all the loonies, foreign legion and greenhorns? The doctor's going to have a look at Flash. And what good do you think that'll do? I can't chop a bloke without good reason. And I can't chop a pilot like Zardanovsky just because you don't like him. You give him an order and he says he's a cockle. He's a good pilot. I don't really care about the King's English. And the greenhorn, who's that? Renouf. He bailed out. That's not a sin, Flip. Don't bloody talk to me about sin. What's the matter with you? All right, you've had a hard time. That's because of all the bloody loonies, dagos and blokes who don't know what's going on. I mean, it's all right for you. You get the stripes and I get the scars. We're all getting scars. As for the stripes, what are you trying to say, Flip? You should be leading the squadron, is that it? Somebody's got to lead the squadron. You mean I'm not doing it right? You said it, not me. Well? A catalogue of complaints. Have I upset him? Like, everybody's wrong except him and... and Flash has decided to fly upside down. He destroyed a hindcall. Perhaps everybody should do it. Did he? Good for him. Flip wants promotion. The respect, I don't know. Well, you know, when people complain about others, it's usually because of their own shortcomings. He's a good flight commander. Perhaps he's got what Uncle describes as the twitch. Oh, come on, he's strong as an ox. Zoology is not my speciality, but I'm sure even oxen have their breaking point. What about Flash? Simple. He's retreating from reality. You're so clever. I'm going to start reading books. Hey, don't get up. The same, sir, it's the smoke. Oh, what's wrong with it? Oh, no, I'm sure it's fine. It's just me, sir. Perhaps it's not your brand. I just don't like cigarettes. Awful, dirty habit. I hate it. Well, why didn't you say? I thought you'd be upset. Of course not. It wasn't an order, you know. Oh, well, in that case... You are an odd chap, aren't you? Sorry, sir. Well, now, I understand you've been flying upside down. Yes. Is that a good idea? Well, I think so, sir. Particularly if you want to be invisible. Invisible? You see, the underside of a Spitfire is painted blue. It's camouflage. Well, I suppose that's because it will merge with the sky. That's to fox the Germans, who'll be flying below. That's the whole point, sir. See, half the time, particularly if it's a Messerschmitt, they attack us from above. If I fly upside down, they might not see me. You think so? Well, I haven't actually asked any of them, but... I don't know. It's possible. What do you think, sir? I'm not a pilot. 
Well, I think we should try anything. Otherwise, the whole world will sink into the abyss of a dark new age made more sinister by the lights of perverted science. <laughs> I don't know about that, perverted science. Well, that's what Mr. Churchill says. Well, I suppose you've seen quite a bit of this war. Has it upset you? Well, I think it's smashing. Smashing? Well, if we stand up to old Hitler, all Europe may be free. The life of the world can go forward into broad, sunlit uplands. The Prime Minister? He thinks it's smashing as well. Ah, the button. I've had a long chat with Flying Officer Gordon. All right, he is a peculiar chap. But is he off his rocker? Probably, but against that he's very keen on the war and particularly keen about killing the enemy. Well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Kept quoting great chunks of Churchill's speeches. Where'd he get those from? They're in the newspapers and on the radio. He's a daily sketch reader. I can't ground a chap for that. Besides, he's one of your more successful pilots. Isn't he? Mm. But is he... Is he round the bend? I can't go on record as saying a pilot who quotes Churchill is so facto mentally unstable. Half the country's doing that. On the other hand, in layman's terms, yes, he's probably slightly <clears throat> loopy. You see, if you ask your average fighter pilot about the war, he shuffles his feet and looks embarrassed and says, well, they started it, didn't they? Not absolutely true as it happens, but... Uh, he certainly doesn't start saying it's the abyss of a new dark age made more sinister by the lights of a perverted science. Old Flash said that. And more. <laughs> um, tablets? Why, what's your problem? Not for me, for Flash. No, 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 no. Lots of rest, good food. Uh, you'll be as right as ninepence. Really? No, not really. The, uh, the big thing is to keep him away from the wireless when the Prime Minister's on. Scramble A flight, sir. Ah, you're off. I said I'd be back for tea time. Thanks for your help. Have I got it right? He's batty, but he can fly. Any problems? Give me a tinkle. Hello, sir. Liked our chat. Mustache forward into broad sunlit uplands. So what we're saying is that everybody got something. Three Heinkels, a 110 and two 109s. Everyone destroyed? I actually followed my Heinkel down to the sea. Bits falling off. And it hit the water? I didn't hang around. I had a 109 on my arse at the time. Then it's damaged, not destroyed. We're making some very extravagant claims. Oh, bugger off. The newspapers are reporting it like cricket scores. Oh, maybe we can declare. It was a hell of a scrap. Pity about Flip. Well, that was a definite. You don't get any more definite than that. Bad show. It's a cook-up. 
You can certainly say that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why don't you join the BBC? Well, if you want my opinion, the whole idea is absurd. With respect, Uncle, you've read your telegraph. May I? 63 Huns knocked down, and we lost a dozen. First class score. But to my certain knowledge, we lost 16. And I think you can halve the total Germans. Are you suggesting the telegraph is lying? Good God, no. But I think our pilots romanticize. You mean they're liars? You're being very touchy. I'm merely suggesting that our pilots exaggerate by about 100%. Do you realize what you're saying? Our chaps are going you up You said it yourself, Uncle. Everything happens so quickly in the air. A puff of smoke, a lick of flame, does not necessarily mean a definite kill. They're in a state of high anxiety, a peak of excitement. They've only got 14 seconds of killing time. It may concentrate the mind, but it does nothing for recalling the incident in tranquility. For someone who's been in an aeroplane twice, how the hell would you know? I listen to you, Uncle. I'm not accusing our pilots of deliberately falsifying their results. That's exactly what you're doing. Yes, I suppose I am. That's why these cine guns are important. Mumbo jumbo. Clever little gadget, sir. Our pilots have got enough instruments to control without that kind of nonsense. Oh, it's simple enough, sir. It only works when the guns are fired, sir. Thank you, Corporal. You're not impressed. I take pilots' word of honor. It's as simple as that. It's a matter of principle. Our chaps are going up there five, six, seven times a day, and then you don't trust them. I don't really like this dugout. Why can't they decorate the place? Well, if you've seen one sandbag, you've seen them all. <laughs> what do you think, Amanda? Do you think they'd paint the place? I'd rather have wallpaper. Oh, dear that, chaps. Amanda's going to be an interior decorator when she grows up. Now look what you've done. I don't know about you, chaps, but this is time for my mid-morning coffee. Thank you.